Good morning, RCC family. Good morning. My name is Sala Thomas, and I want to welcome you to our River City Christian Ministry Sunday morning worship service. And it's so good to have you guys here, friends, family, co-workers, those who are watching each and every week. We're so grateful to have you with us. At this point, we're going to transition to our communion service. Communion is a time where we reflect on the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. And this time here, we set aside each week to, to remember, to remember Jesus' death on the cross. Yes. The first scripture I want to turn to is in Romans chapter 5, starting at verse 6. At just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, that's a, that's a powerful uh, scripture when you think about what Jesus did on the cross for us. It says, while we were still powerless. And when you think about being powerless, we have no power when we're in sin. We had, we had nothing. You know, we thought we were powerful, but in God's eyes, we were powerless. Let's turn over to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 14. And we're going to look at another scripture here. It says, starting in verse 14, it says, For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. All of this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You know, the heart of the message of reconciliation, you know, is very simple. God was reconciling us to the world through, through Jesus' death. And I think when we think about that, it's, it's a time that we, we didn't deserve the gift that God has given us in Jesus' death. We did not deserve it. It was a gift freely given simply because God loved us. And it's so important that we don't forget that. We don't forget that we got a new chance. We got a second chance at life. We got a second chance to be forget. We've been forgiven for our sins, so we have a new life. So like the scripture said, the old is gone and the new is here. And we have to live as though we have a new life. You know, we have to live as we have a clean slate. We can't revert back to our old ways. We have to make sure that the message of the cross does not become foolishness, but that we always remember it is the power of God. And 1 Corinthians 1, 18. You know, so this morning, this is a time to reflect on our personal relationship with God. This is not a general reflection. This is not whatever for everybody else. This is for, this is between, it's a one-on-one relationship between us and God. It's very important that we take it personal because if we don't take it personal, then we won't be grateful. And we, we know that God, so as the scripture in John 3.16 says, it says, God so loved the world, he gave his only son. And I pray this morning as we take communion as we remember and we reflect on the cross and what God has done for us, that it really produces a motivation of gratitude for God to live that new life that he's given us. Amen. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, thank you so much, God, for how you love us. Thank you for how you take care of us. God, thank you most of all for loving us enough to send your son to die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. God, we're so grateful. We are we are very grateful and we understand that the gift that you've given us. God, we pray that we, we don't take uh, this time for granted, God, but that we sit and reflect on all that you have done, God. We are so grateful. We are so thankful, God. I pray that as we take communion of the, with the, uh, the bread representing Jesus' body and the juice representing his blood, and we remember and we reflect on this time as we, as we take communion today. I pray that you, you be with us during this time, and we praise in your son's name. Amen. 
Good morning, RCC family and friends. My name, is, my name is Franklin Collins, and I'm one of the brothers that serves here at the RCC. I first would like to thank the leadership for giving me this opportunity to share the tithing message with you today. Uh, please turn your Bibles to Mark 12, starting at 41. We'll be reading 41 through 44. Okay. The widow's offering. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. You know, uh, reading the scripture it puts to my mind, um, thinking about uh, how things were before COVID-19 hit. Everything was good, so everyone didn't have a problem with uh, tithing. But uh, since we've been going through challenging times, uh, some have thought about not tithing at all, or uh, just giving of their time. You know, God has never thought of not blessing us. Amen. You know, even though we can't give what we like to, that's no excuse for not giving at all. So this brings to mind the widow. She gave all that she had left. So we should be willing just to uh, give cheerfully and from the heart. So just, uh, just want to say as we go through challenging times, uh, give what you can. And remember, we can't outgive God. He has us. And let us pray. Our uh, Father, just want to say, Lord, thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you for all the blessings you bestow upon us. Uh, please continue just to uh, lead us, Lord. Uh, lead our hearts, Lord. Let us uh, give cheerfully, Lord. Not only give of our monetary selves, Lord, but give of our selves physically, Lord. Let us help our neighbors. Let us help our friends. Let us help our family, Lord. And just want to say, Lord, please continue to be with us. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, RCC family. Good morning. My name is Tim Young, and I'll be praying uh, before our minister, Mark Harris, comes up and preaches the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we are grateful as we uh, are able to worship this morning, God, and give you praise, glory, and honor. Uh, as uh, Mark comes up, God, fill him with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Open our hearts, open our minds, and help us to receive what it is you have to tell us today, God. Help us to apply it to our lives and help us to continue to grow closer to you and closer to one another as we continue to love each other and, uh, and have our goal uh, of making it to heaven, God. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God is good all and all the time, God my God is good, family. Amen. It's good to be a Christian in the kingdom of God. Amen. It's good to be here at the RCC. Thank you, family and friends, for joining us for our pre-recorded service this morning. Uh, I want to thank the brothers for all their help. Danny, take care of the sound for us today. Frank, thank you for the tithe. Sawa, thank you so much for communion. Tim, thank you for your prayer. And well, and thank you in advance, our elder, for coming and responding uh, to the message today. Amen. Amen. Family, let's get in the word of God. Amen. It's been great uh, getting in God's word with you on Sunday mornings. And uh, I'm excited about us growing. It's great to hear your responses, the things you're learning and growing, getting in God's words. Uh, this morning, I want to talk about something. I want to preach on something that I believe that we got to get back to. That I believe the church was built on it. And I think we pulled away from it a little bit. And we got to get back to it. And the title of my message this morning is Audacious Prayers. Audacious Prayers. Audacious Prayers are bold and daring prayers. Prayers with boldness expecting God, expecting God to answer is biblical. Having bold prayers and expecting God to answer those prayers is biblical. Audacious prayers should be persistent, shameless, consistent, bold, and daring. Does this describe our prayer life? Come on, brother. Come on, help us out. Come on, brother. I pray that 
we as a congregation, as a people, can get back to praying bold prayers. Amen. Prayers that we know that only God can answer. That we don't rely on prayers thinking we can get it done through our ability. Or something we can see being done. Turn up into Luke chapter 11, verse 1. And I'm not saying that we completely moved away from that. I'm saying I want us to go completely back to it in all our prayers. I want us to be bold in our prayer walk. Bold when we talk to God. Listen here to what Jesus, our brother, says to us in Luke chapter 1, verse 1. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he would not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, but one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you, fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? My God. Jesus has given us an example of how to pray and how to call on God. Our prayer life should be like this. We should be bold and daring. I love the example of Jesus gave. He told him how to pray and then he said, but what if, what if you had a friend that come in the middle of the night and gave this little parable and say, that person didn't get up because of their friendship. He got up because of a person's shameless audacity. Oh my goodness. We got to have shameless audacity when we pray to God. Amen. Call on his name. Amen. We should have no shame in that what we ask for. And what we want and what we need. Family, go for it. Go for it. Go for it in prayer. Let it all out on the table for the Lord. Have no shame in your game. When you call on the Lord. Amen. Amen, brother. And you pray and pray some more. Right. I want to read 1 Thessalonians. Okay. Chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. Out of the New King James Version. I just read out of NIV. I'm going to read out of the New King James Version on this scripture. Listen. What our father said to us here. And 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus 
for you. It is God's will for us to pray without ceasing to him. Calling on his name. When we really want something, it will motivate us to pray audacious prayers. We need to be specific in our prayers to God. Even though he already knows what we need and what we want. We must not be afraid to ask God to give us the desires of our hearts. You hear me, family? Don't be afraid to ask God to give you your desires in your heart. Be bold. Go for it. Watch what my God do for you. We must not be afraid to ask God to give us desires of our hearts. Even though he already know what they are. God wants us to communicate boldly to him in prayer. God will answer vague prayers, family. But being audacious in prayer creates a deeper bond with our Lord God Almighty. Because we're praying and for something that we know only God can do. And it keeps us on our knees calling on his name. And when he answers our prayers, my God, we know it's him and we give him praise and glory and honor. And it draws us closer to him. Family, we must pray like this. Family, we are willing are we, are we willing to take bold risk in our prayers? Or are you afraid to ask for things? We got to make sure that we're not being cowards in prayers. We can't be, here's the right word for it, timid in our prayer life. We must not be afraid. God's answer to our, he will answer our prayers. Being afraid will cause us to be timid and hinder our prayer life. It will hinder it. Because how can God power work when we are afraid and timid? We must not be like this. Turn me to 2 Timothy, verse 1 and 7 in the NIV. Listen to what God says about timidity. We must not. God does not want us to be like this family. He wants us to be bold in our prayer life. Second Timothy, chapter one, verse seven. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but give us power, love and self-discipline. Family, God's spirit does not make us timid. Do you understand that? God is not a timid spirit. We got to understand that and believe that and have convictions on that. The spirit that lives in us, which is God's spirit, is not timid. It is not afraid. We must not quench the spirit. Therefore, we can be bold and audacious in our prayers because it is his spirit. It is God living. So I want to encourage us to really look at our prayer life. We're going to be getting back together soon. We're heading that direction. I want us coming back full of the spirit, full of faith and and full of power from on high. Ready to see God do some incredible things. Because we pray for some incredible things to be done. This church was built on audacious prayers. Through Jesus Christ. 
I remember before we opened the doors, family, me, Dan, and Saul went to the beach, Atlantic Beach. And we cried out to God before we even opened the doors of the church. Amen. Yeah, amen. We asked God to bless us, yeah. to provide for us. Right. And we committed our lives to him. Right. And we cried out on that beach. Yeah. Ashy legs and all. <laughs> Calling on God's name. Amen. You remember that, Sour? We built this church on audacious prayers. Remember, we prayed then, and then we went to the hide and asked them, could we use a room that was charging over 5,000 a, a visit? And they gave it to us for little of nothing. A few hundred dollars. That's a bold prayer. And then we went and put it to the test. Yeah. And God opened the floodgates of heaven. We met there seven years, yeah. six and a half to be right close to seven years. They didn't want us to leave. Yeah. They threw, they, the, the, the day we left, they threw a little mini party for us, yeah. gave us drinks and punch and cookies. And they just loved us. That was God. Yeah. Oh, God. And we prayed on that beach and we had our first baptism. Julius Covington. My God. Now he's married with twins. Go on, Jada. She gave him twins. It's your bad self, full of the Holy Spirit. God answered. Remember, family? The audacious prayers that we had in the prayer box, and we still got some. Yeah, Remember, family? See, some of you, this is our prayer box as a church. Yeah. Prayer box. Yeah. And it says, Jesus looked at them and said, with, with man, this is impossible, possible, but with God, all things are possible. Yeah. And we have that with that scripture, Matthew 9, 26. And we put prayers in this box full of prayers and envelopes and prayers. And then we pray over the box that every prayer the person at church and our friends put in here, God will answer. Have you forgotten about the box that stretches our faith? Don't forget, family. Don't forget how God answered those prayers. Remember, me and Vanita put two separate prayers in there for Brittany, to, for someone to fall in love with Brittany and marry her. We put it on January 5th, and on January 7th, her husband moved to town, became her boss. Remember, she called me when I met Tremaine, and a year later, a year later, January 5th, that next year, they were married. He not only became a Christian, became, Vinnie had prayed that whoever met Brittany would be able to sing songs. Man, we pray specifically in bold that he'll get along with our family, that he will love us. He can sing. I pray that he'll be a leader, be humble and loving and kind. Look what God brought us. Look at Tremaine. Every prayer we answer through him. He's God sent. Audacious prayer. And God opened the floodgates for us. Then he even put on that on card that if Brittany didn't want to work, she could stay home and, and raise children. Tremaine told her, hey, you, you stay home. I got this. Now they tell me, her and Vanita always tell me I open up a bakery. I'm all for that. <laughs> but I'm just, I was, I'm all for it too. Tell Vinita I'm for it too. But I'm just so encouraged by how God answered the prayers. Family. Not just for me and Vanita now. Have you, don't forget how we pray so boldly for Danielle. Come on. Come on. Come on. For Danielle. That's right. That's right. 
not only become a Christian, did she move in with Royal with her two girls? And then we've been praying. We called her as a church that she get her boys back. Danielle not only got her boys back, but got her own place, her own apartment. She been there over a year. How long she been there? Look, that's incredible. Got clean. Doing awesome. Have you forgotten the bold prayer we have for Danielle? We got to remember how to pray this way. We need more Danielle's. We need more Tremaine's. We need more Julius Covington's. We need more weddings and marriages. Giving God glory and praise. We need more audacious prayers. Family and friends, turn with me to Psalms 66, verse 17. Amen. As I wipe my forehead and take a little bit of water, I'm just excited about this. On, turn with me to Psalms 66. Listen to this, verse 17 through 20. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. My God. You hear God here? Family, we need to be crying out to God like this each and every day of our lives. Family, friends, we must not cherish sins in our hearts. See, remember he says, if I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Okay, sometimes I'm here to tell you, let's just be very open and honest with one another. A lot of our prayers don't get answered because we cherish sins in our hearts. A lot of our prayers don't get answered because our motives are not pure. See, a lot, we, we got we to look in the mirror and say, okay, God, remove whatever you need to remove in me so you will answer every single prayer I call out to your name. And we got to make sure when we pray, we say, God, we want your will to be done, not our own. Remember how Jesus prayed for us when he was on the cross? He said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. What a prayer. Imagine if that was one of us. We'd be like, God, kill them all. <laughs> Man, look at I'm mad at every one of them, Father. I can't imagine having that power. I've been like, Zip, he gone, bam, bam, take him out. But Jesus was, that was not Jesus' spirit. He says, Father, forgive them all. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. What a bold prayer for the God, for people. After they beat him, spit upon him, whipped him, agonized him, tortured him, lied on him, cheated on him, told all kind of garbage. He prayed for us in the midst of his agony. That is audacious. We need to be like Jesus in the midst of our trials, in the midst of our challenges in life. We call on God for other people, for ourselves, and not surrender over to Satan. Family, we must not harbor sins in our hearts. This will hinder our prayers from being heard by God. Be open and repent. Fess up. Own up and repent. So a refreshness can come That's right. from the Lord. That's right. Acts 319. There you go. There you go, brother. Hey. And listen, family. When God answers our prayers, right. don't take any glory or praise. Hey. Give it all over the hill. Right. Don't Amen. dare take any credit. Right. Don't you dare. Amen. Give it all over to him. 
and you have our father answer even more prayers. Amen. Don't get weak and tired calling on God. Well, Remember he said, and I just read 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, pray without ceasing. Right. And it say pray for a week without ceasing and then quit. Right. He said pray without ceasing. Right. Just keep praying. Right. God will hear you. Right. He heard you the first time. Right. But keep praying. Right. And ask God to reveal his will to you on that prayer. Ask God to reveal you his will to you for what you're praying about. And then you got to be willing to accept his will. You, hear me? you got to be willing to accept his will now. Because if you don't, you're going to get frustrated and discouraged. You got to trust God's will over your will. You don't know what God has in store for. Remember last week, I think it was last week or the week for last, share about not wanting to go to uh, Texas. It was last week I shared I didn't want to go to Texas. When I got home, I thought about that. Could I, 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 can't, I can't imagine if I would have just did my will instead of God's will. It was God's will for me to go, but I didn't want to go. I had to get help and surrender. I had to pray and say, God, okay, if this is your will, I surrender. Let your will be done. And I had to get excited about going to Texas. And I did because I trusted God. I had no idea moving to Texas that we're going to help go lead a New Orleans church also. And in New Orleans, I'm going to meet Mary. I'm going to meet um, David and Eke Gary and Donise. Uh, now, we're best friends with 25, 30 years later. Can you imagine if God, if I didn't listen to God? What would have happened? See, I couldn't see all God's blessings around the corner. I had to trust. I prayed about it, and then I, I was like, okay, God, this is a scary prayer. You want me to just quit my job and move let your will be done. I'm going to trust you. It was bold to surrender and give up and go. And God opened the floodgates. I had no idea I was going to be speaking in Kansas City. I had no idea we were going to go to Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and help the church out there. I had no idea what God was doing, that I was going to be the co-evangelist of the Dallas church. Now Dallas church has thousands of members doing great. I had no idea that if leading a Bible talk on Colleen with one person that would turn to 32 people and those 32 people would go plant the church in Austin, Texas, that's doing great now. I did not know all that, but God did. We just got to surrender to his will, whatever his will is. Once we pray, trust his will and watch what he'll do with us. Family. Whatever you've been praying, say, God, show me your will in this prayer. So I'll be willing to submit to it and surrender to it so that you can be glorified. Amen. My God, just pray. That's bold by itself. That you're going to tell God you're going to be willing to submit. That have him show you his will in your prayer. So you'll be willing to submit to it and trust him. My God, I want to close reading in Exodus. Family, friends, I want to close talking about Moses when he was speaking with God. You know, when Moses was speaking to God, you know, how do we talk to God today? Prayer. So when Moses was talking to God, it's like he's, his prayers are all coming through. True. Everything he's talking about. Watch what he says to God. The Bible says Moses was one of the most humble men in the Bible. But watch the boldness of this humble man and what God says to him. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 33, verse 12 through 18. I'm excited about what God is teaching us and showing us. I pray 
that from the day that I, that prayer box starts filling up again, we'll start sharing about what God, how God has answered our prayers and about all the audacious prayers we've been putting in that box. Giving God glory, praise, and honor. Look at verse 12. Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways, ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Come on, Moses. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else? was distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth. Amen. My God. Amen. Amen. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Then Moses said, now show me your glory. Moses said, Father, show me your glory. Father, we need to pray, God, show us your glory. Show us your glory. Go before us and show us your glory. Why can't we speak boldly to God like this? Audacious, but yet humble. Is this our prayer life? Is this how we speak and pray and talk to God? Friends and family, let us get back to praying. Audacious prayers, bold prayers that only God and only you know that God answered that prayer. How many times you said in your life, only God could have done that. That's what God want us to say. Only God could have did this. Right. Only God could have gave us this building. Right. Only God. It's because of God we're still standing. That's right. That's right. Come on, it's because of God where none of us died yet. Because of God we come through sickness. That's right. That's Lost right. jobs. Amen. Tight financially. Come on. But still standing. Come on. Because of God. Yeah. He has shown us his glory. And I pray that God is just getting this glory thing started. I want to see more and more and more. What about you? Some of us need to get off the bench and get on our knees. And some of us need to repent and get in the water and get on our knees. Some of us need to stop doubting and say, show me your glory. Take away my doubt and get on our knees. Some of us need to stop praying prayers. We can see and start praying prayers that you cannot see. And get on our knees. And give God all glory, praise, and honor. And to God be the glory. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning. My name is Roy Al Williams, and I'm one of the elders that serves here at the River City Christian Ministries. Amen. And we are grateful to be here this morning to hear Mark preach the word. Amen. Preach the word about praying audacious prayers. Come on, are we doing this today? Are we praying audacious prayers? Are we praying prayers that are bold? Prayers that we know that only God can answer. Are we being specific in our prayers so we know that God is answering them? Are we going to God in prayer and petition? Are we going to God understanding that we go to him confidently, knowing that only him is going to answer this prayer? Thank you, Mark, for that incredible message on audacious prayers, prayer, bold prayers. You know, 
I do want to share something with you is that I wasn't there for Julius's prayer, but we was there for the prayer for this church. Rochelle and I, we was in another ministry, but we knew Dan and Veronica, and we knew what was going on here. And we prayed with Dan and Veronica all the time for this church to flourish. And look at what God has done. Also, I was there for Danielle's prayer. I prayed for Danielle before I even met her. We prayed because I know Sonia reached out to her and she was shy about reaching out to Danielle. She said, can you pray for me? Can you pray for Danielle that she would become a Christian? And we prayed and we prayed and we prayed some more. We prayed bold prayers and audacious prayers for Danielle. Look at her now. Thank you for sharing that with us. Amen. And we're going to continue praying. We're going to continue praying bold and audacious prayers. We're going to continue praying for us when we come back together. We're fired up. We are radiant like Moses. We are radiant uh, to the point that we know that we are full of the Spirit when we come back together as a body. Amen, Amen Mark. Thank you so much for that message. And let's talk about a couple of announcements that we have. Uh, we are in tune to the Thirsty Soul. We thank you so much for everybody checking in. It's posted every Tuesday at 6 o'clock. And we thank you right now to Women in Meeting. This is a pre-recorded message, and the Women in Meeting, and I'm very excited. When I get home, my wife tells me about the visitors that are there. So encouraging that the women are inviting other women to be on the Zoom. Thank you so much, Vanita, for leading that. We also very encouraged uh, for the Thirsty Soul as a Women's Corner. Coming soon, Vanita's bringing some more Thirsty Soul with the Women's Corner. We're looking forward to that, and we're very grateful for the... RCC kids, every Sunday, the kids can learn just like we're learning. Yeah. Be fired up just like we're fired up. And we thank you so much just for Sal and Patrice leading that. Yeah. Very grateful for everyone who's participating in the RCC kids and helping our children to learn and to grow and to be uh, more like Jesus. Amen. So we thank you for that. And let's go to God in prayer. Our uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity we can come before you, Father, boldly, audaciously, knowing that we can come before you knowing our prayers are going to be answered. And when our prayers are not answered, we know that they're being answered because that is just not your will for us at that time. We just come before you today thanking you, Father, for allowing us to come before your throne boldly and confidently, knowing that we don't have to go to anybody else, but we can come directly to you in prayer. Thank you so much for giving us that freedom to do that, Father. Thank you so much for Jesus' example of crying out to you, knowing that we could do the same thing as Jesus did, crying out to you in prayer and petition, crying out to you for other people, crying out for other people's souls, crying out for forgiveness, crying out for repentance. Thank you for the opportunity that we could do that. Father, I thank you so much that we could be able to embrace exactly what Jesus has done. So we thank you that we can continue praying for the prayers in the prayer box, Father, adding more prayers to the prayer box. And uh, we thank you once again for the opportunity to come before you and pray. We love you and we thank you. And we pray all this in your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.